the site with planning consent. Um, and we went in with, a, with our associates with a completely new brief and a completely new concept for this building um, and got about an extra 100,000 square feet of office space through that process. And we think what has ended up being a much better building, of course. Um, but it's, we did that very quickly within, within, three, within three years, sort of initial concept through to uh, completion of the core and shell within three years. And it's a very fast process for us. Um, and of course we had to work to limitations such as the height of surrounding buildings, but we've really, I think, Arab turned that to our advantage in this, in this building with the kind of the shape and the architecture, but then enabling the terraces because of the height issues. It's, you know, we've, we've kind of said, look, well, we've got a small site, what, how can we maximise it? Um, and it's turned out really good. Well, the roof terraces are an important part of this building. Uh, we started the idea with British land on, on Plantation Place, our previous building with them, uh, where this feature became part of the, of the building um, shape and its, its planning envelope. Now, it became very successful, very popular with tenants who really wanted to use the space on the terraces, so much so that there were tenants queuing up for these floor plates. So it became a very central part of what we're doing here at Rokemaker for the tenants to use and enjoy. It, it rented very quickly in the marketplace, a very tough marketplace. So certainly we can say that it attracted people to the building and they they rented the building uh, in their very difficult circumstances. I think it's very hard to take out one particular aspect and say it was because of the roof terraces, but the offer of the building, sustainable office building in the City of London, was a very compelling one. And the terraces are an important part of that, not only for sustainability in a kind of environmental way, but also for people to really celebrate and enjoy the building. Well, the, the facade is quite an important part of the low energy story and also the quality of the internal environment for people. Uh, we've designed the facade to be very reactive to its orientation. It tilts away from the sun. Um, it's important because offices generate lots of heat, computers, people, lights, make the space very warm. We're trying to keep the sun out of office buildings and that helps to define the architecture and the articulation of the facade. And what you'll see is panels tilted away from the sun's path. They tend to face more north towards the less sunny part of the sky. This reduces energy consumption and increases the time people can have their blinds up and enjoy the view. The fact that the facades behave differently is something in our associates thing, that we want to the facades to be responsive to the different sun's position, different times of the day, but also to react to the context, the architectural context of the building. It is in the city, it's glimpsed from the street, uh, and we want it to be an exciting view at different times of the day. What's, what's slightly different about Arab Associates is that architects and engineers work together in a committed environment. So Arab Associates has its own engineers that work on Arab Associates projects uh, to make the agenda of the realisation of buildings much more seamless and much more um, uh, thorough in the sense that the whole building contains the ideas and agenda from all the disciplines. It's a large commercial city centre office building but with a little bit different. We're not in the core of the city here, we're on the edge in Islington and we turned to Arab because we'd worked with them for a number of years on quite a few buildings in the past and said, you know, can we, we want you to have a little bit of fun with this building and particularly push the environmental credentials. And I have to say, when they first started looking at this building back in 2006, I think, or five, we didn't know as a client really what we wanted in that area. And we were quite led by Arab um, as both the architect and the structural engineers in terms of pushing us as a client on what we'd be willing to do with environment, with the, the sort of sustainability credentials of the building. And we think that Arab have come to a really good solution here where we were able to deliver a really commercial building which meets giant banks as well as law firms, a, a really big trading environment, quite dense, but also delivers really good energy performance and also some of the sort of more tactile features in the building for the day-to-day -day occupiers. Well, as well as the uh, sustainable envelope of the building, the, the heart and lungs needs to work really well Two, this is the, uh, the boiler room where we have the heat generating plant and a key aspect of this is the biomass boiler. Now all the heating for the hot water is from renewable sources. So we have solar collectors on the roof to heat the water and we also have a biomass boiler in the basement. But whilst we recover all the heat we can, we need to top it up too. So really the systems work as hard as the envelope in creating a low impact, low energy and low carbon office building for people. The process continues outside the building too. So for example, the biomass uh, that's used in the boiler is sourced locally from the UK and the products of combustion are used for fertiliser. Uh, so the complete loop is considered from an environmental point of view, not just the energy. What's really exciting is the way Macquarie Bank have come in and been able to realise their, their particular vision within this building to adapt it and to modify it to what they want out of the building. And that's for us as designers really exciting that it, the building can accommodate this, this, this radical way of, of occupying office floor space, taking big uh, 
chunks of space to make them social spaces to be places for people um, as well as, as more conventional office space. So we're, we're, we're really proud of the fact that other designers can also use the building through its life um, to be a successful place for these tenants. Most important but the least kind of uh, easy to define um, example of, of kind of sustainable thinking is the atrium itself. It's a uh, <coughs> a way of connecting businesses where in a way you kind of avoid the silo effect of floors. Um, it's been a major cause of, of reducing elevator usage, we think up to about 50%. And it's driving traffic that previously wasn't happening between people. Um, and in the end of the day, the, the most sustainable organization is the organization that, that builds on itself and, and expands and extends itself in, in you know, the most natural kind of organic way. One of the key things for us was around how we create a space that encourages collaboration and transparency across our businesses. So uh, we wanted something unique and we wanted something that represented uh, Macquarie but uh, in particular drove uh, our staff members to think about how they operate in different ways and made the most of the space and environment around them. When Macquarie uh, took the lease on, on these uh, uh, six floors of Rope Maker Place, the building, the building was uh, uh, you know, simply uh, six conventional floors uh, spread out over uh, the, sort of the middle of the building without any vertical connection between them. So uh, Macquarie took a, a sort of a, a, a leap of faith in um, exploring the opportunity to cut through a hole through six floors and that's probably something that uh, hasn't been done on this scale before. Uh, it wasn't simply a little stairwell, it was a kind of a, a major gesture and that gesture was all about connecting uh, these different businesses together and um, trusting in the kind of synergy that uh, could be uh, achieved by uh, a dynamic movement of people through the space, uh, vertically uh, through the atrium. Curiously, we were able to sell the concept of losing floor space that they were renting because we had already achieved a very high density uh, of uh, people on the floors. So uh, particularly down on these lower two floors, you have trading groups that are operating at very, very high density. I think it's like one per nine uh, square meters or something like that. Um, and that meant that the building's uh, fire exiting system was already maximized. So by taking away floor space, we actually weren't taking away usable space because there was no more ability to use space on these floors. Um, and so that in a way created a business rationale for uh, uh, removing space that you were renting. At the moment we're in a shell and core space, which is the basic offer to a tenant. What we've done here, from a design perspective, is make it as adaptable as possible. So tenants can put their own um, staircases in, they can adapt the space to be how, how they want it to be. And there's quite a confusion in the industry about flexibility and adaptability. Adaptability is something where someone can intervene to make something their own, and is normally a more dramatic intervention than a flexible approach that allows several things to happen. I think the big change over the last 10 years is that sustainability has, been, has moved from a marginal uh, enthusiasm of a few into something that everyone uh, is grasping and is saying we have to think about this issue and we have to be responsible in our use of, of resources of the planet. I think um, still at the kind of uh, emerging end is sustainability for people uh, and that's something we're very keen to, to progress is designing for people to really thrive uh, and, and fulfil their potential within our built environment and I think that is something that will now grow over the next 10 years to be um, something that, that both landlords and tenants need to work together to get the best from. I think what's interesting about where we are in, in this point in time is that businesses have, have a, a kind of accumulatively begun to recognize the importance of uh, collaboration and connectivity uh, in their staff and what kind of uh, uh, knowledge sharing and, and business opportunities can flow out of that. So 10 years ago, uh, there simply wouldn't have been the consensus to do something like this. Um, so maybe there might have been sort of some bright people within the organization who could have had a vision to do something like this, but they would never have been able to carry along all the other uh, uh, senior leadership. I think from, from day one, we, we, uh, uh, the first time I was uh, here in, uh, uh, on the early days of occupancy, I noticed an IT group using the top floor meeting room for about 20 odd people. And they're based down on, on level six and the entire group used the staircase to move through six floors without you know, resorting to elevators at all. And when we saw that happening, we thought, this is amazing. It's, it's like day one and people are using the staircase and, <clears throat> and not thinking about elevators over six floors of, of travel. And they went up that way and they came down that way. And I think, um, <clears throat> I think you know, humans are actually naturally you know, quite physical 
creatures. <coughs> but they also respond to uh, the, the visual cues in the environment. And if the elevators had been the things that had been right next to the meeting room, they would have used elevators. But because the stairs here, and, and the stairs like, you know, in, in the foreground, the elevators in the background, the elevator gets forgotten about. Um, so a visible connection thing is actually uh, uh, very meaningful. A lot of what Macquarie is about as an organisation is innovation. Um, we're looking at different ways of exploring new opportunities um, ab about adapting to change and I think that you, we see a lot of it in this space. Um, the industry in finance is also about transparency and I think that this does build an extremely tra transparent environment. The atrium is obviously a very unique feature of the building and you know, a lot, lots of landlords could be quite restrictive about taking such a bold step. Um, British land and uh, through the design that we put forward and um, the support that we got from everyone involved, uh, everyone was, was quite open to exploring this as an opportunity and ending up with this great result. We do believe that more sustainable buildings will hold their value and their quality for longer. So we see it more of a sort of investment, um, in, we're seeing, you know, the market hasn't borne this out yet with these kinds of buildings. but. We do believe that that's where the market's going and we are investing in our buildings to be able for them to hold their value in the long term.